I wonder what could be inside. Wow. Today on Problem Solved. Nothing says holiday like custom homemade gifts. Oh my gosh, you're so cute. If you've ever struggled wrapping presents, here's the right way to wrap a gift. A record player with Bluetooth connectivity combines the vintage with the new. This is going to a really special family. I cannot wait for them to see this. Is this for me? Friend! Yes. It is! It's perfect, it's so cute. I hope you love it. Old maid, what are you trying to say? Gift giving season's here, or as I like to say, gift getting season. It's my favorite part. Gift receiving gift season receiving. is upon us. <laughs> Here for all the uh, bottles of wine, whatever you want to give me. I mean, I'll take it. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not discerning. I, I'll no, take no. anything. A gift is a gift. You just go ahead and get creative. Yeah. I'll take anything. Do you have a favorite gift that you've received before? The ones that people put thought into, even if they're small. So maybe something DIY, something homemade that was specific to me. So I know this person really thought of me when they were creating this gift. I feel like those are the best gifts. But really, you know, I'll take any gift. I'm uh, and I'm not picky. Yeah. Any gift anybody wants to give me, I'm in. Nothing says holiday like custom homemade gifts. And I mean, anything that gets the kids involved, count me in. Here's how to make DIY sock snow people. First things first, take a long white tube sock and turn it inside out. Then cut your sock just below the heel. Now you're gonna tie a rubber band around the foot end of the sock and do it really, really tightly. Like a bunch of times. And next, we're gonna do a super hard step, which is turning our sock right side out. Too easy. Then we're gonna fill our sock up with a lot of rice, but I'm using a funnel to make it so much easier. When you're putting your rice in, just take your time. Take it easy. Don't wanna spill rice everywhere. Once you've filled it up pretty full, you wanna tamp it down on the countertop so you have room to make it even fuller and really get a nice round bottom of your snowman. I'm just gonna keep filling her up until she gets really, really round. I've only spilled a few grains of rice. I'm feeling pretty good about this right now. Once you've got your snowman full and round with rice, you're gonna tie it off with another rubber band at the top. Really tight so no rice falls out. If you've got a lot of excess sock at the top, you can just cut it off. We're gonna shape our head and to do that, I'm gonna pinch it a little bit at the top to make a nice round head. And you guessed it, another rubber band. Look at that. Now this is where you can really customize your snow people. I grabbed a really fuzzy, cozy sock that's colorful and has a fun pattern to use as my scarf and my hat. To make the hat, we're gonna cut kind of in the middle of the foot of the sock. I can't wait for you to see what we turn this into. It's gonna be so cute. You can make a really cute palm with the toe part of the sock. So I'm gonna put a rubber band around this part to make my pom pom. Let's see if this fits. Ah, oh my gosh, it's so cute. Little pom. Perfect. We're not done with this sock yet though. We're gonna cut a strip of the sock this way and use it as our scarf. We're gonna tie the scarf around our snowman's neck now and cover that rubber band that's under there. To really kick this craft up a notch, we're gonna make it look super realistic by cutting some fringe in the scarf. The little details on the accessories on this snowman just make me so happy and they really elevate this craft. Now it's time for the final touches with some buttons and a nose. Ooh, now he's all buttoned up. Last but not least, this little carrot button for the nose. And I didn't do eyes because I love that fun gnome look where you pull the hat down over the eyes. Oh my gosh, you're so cute. What should I name you? They're just so easy and so much fun. And I think they would make great gifts for teachers. Adorable. I remember my mom used to get these like gift baskets from work and they were so generic. It just was like a bunch of like cookies, a yeah, bunch of yeah, like yeah, yeah. stuff. And you know, half of it we'd want, the yeah. other half we're like, oh, we don't want anything. Yeah. One Christmas, my friend made me a gift basket of teas. And it was like a cute coffee mug that she knew I would love. It was teas that she knew I would love. Mm -hmm. It was the tea infuser. Everything in it was so perfect because it was picked out just for me. And oh, I yeah. thought that just made me realize in that moment that like, Putting some thought into assembling a gift, yeah. of you know customizing it for the person, yeah. is is the ultimate 
gift. That's where the magic happens, right? In gift giving. And it didn't take a ton of know-how or effort. All you're doing is picking a theme and assembling stuff, but it's so personal and yeah. so amazing. See, you remember that. You yeah. remembered that gift. And every element is yeah. like, catered to the person, yeah. which I think is really special. Making a great personalized gift doesn't mean you have to be crafty. All you need is a basket and a theme. Here's how you make one unforgettable gift basket. The first thing you have to do is pick your theme. This gift is for a really fun family that I know loves to play games together, so I chose a family game night theme. When I was picking games for this basket, I thought that I should choose games that cover kind of a wide range of ages. So adults can have fun, kids can have fun, fun for the whole fam. One thing you can do to easily elevate your gift basket is stick within a color theme. Mine's holiday themed, so I'm doing red with green accents. And I think it's gonna be really fun and totally appropriate for the season. And if any of the items that you're putting in your gift basket don't exactly fit the color scheme, you can always decant them and put them in pretty jars like this. And it doesn't have to be expensive, but the little details go a long way. Who doesn't love marshmallows? Once you've got all your items picked out, you can add your fill. I also like to put a tea towel down first that's festive and on theme because then they can keep it and it's just another gift. I feel like adding the tea towel also makes it a little less chaotic because you don't have this stuff all over the place. I'm gonna mix in my other color now so I can sort of layer the colors in. Adding paper fill like this also helps your items kind of sit up so you can see everything and it just keeps it organized so not everything's falling to the bottom of the basket and looking really chaotic. When you're ready to add your items to your basket, you wanna start with the bigger or taller items in the back, smaller items in the front, and to get them to sit and lay perfectly, you can use double-sided tape. When all of your items are in place, you can dress your basket up a little bit, and I'm just doing a bow and a personalized gift tag. You can buy a bow, you can make a bow, glue it, double-sided tape, whatever you wanna do. And this is going to a really special family. I cannot wait for them to see this. Now this gift is definitely ready for giving. So good. Is this for me? Friend, what? it is. It's perfect, it's so cute. I hope you love it. Old maid, what are you trying to say? Yahtzee. You're not just gifting the theme and all the items in it. You can put a tea towel in it. You can gift the basket, obviously. And every basket that I've gotten as a gift, you know, we got a bunch of baskets of baby items for our baby shower. And I use all of those baskets to this day to store stuff. So it's not just the items, it's the basket, it's whatever else is in it, you know, whatever you're wrapping it with. I, for the longest time, was never good at like wrapping, you know, like cutting the paper yeah. and folding it on a box or yeah, on a Yeah, some people are thing. geniuses at it. Trust me, you don't need to pull out the rolls of wrapping paper and be in a room for days wrapping <laughs> gifts. If you've ever struggled wrapping presents, here's the right way to wrap a gift. Because wrapping paper tends to curl up, I like to roll it out the other way. To get the right size, put your box at the edge of the paper. Now rotate it three times. One, two, three. Now make your cut a few inches away from your box. The sharper the scissors, the cleaner the cut. Now measure for the sides of your box. You want the paper to come up three quarters of the way. And the same for the other side. I have two-sided paper, so I'm gonna pick this side. Place your box upside down on your paper. For one edge of the paper, fold it up with about an inch overlap. And you can tape that in place. Push the box into the paper to make sure it's nice and snug. For the other side, fold the paper under until it meets the edge on the other side. Then make a clean crease. Now tape that edge down. That looks great already, but we're not done yet. We've got to do the ends. Fold in a nice clean triangle at the corner. A good clean crease is gonna be your friend here. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other corner. Now it helps to flip the box over. I'm gonna tuck in and crease this corner. The side with the seam can be a little more tricky, but go ahead and do the same thing over here. Fold in and tape both sides. Now do the same thing on the other side. Now you know the right way to wrap a gift. Kind of proud of myself. Can I open it? Coming up next, a record player with Bluetooth connectivity combines the vintage with the new. Looking for an easy DIY gift for your friends with a sweet tooth? Or just treat yourself. And later, I hope my nephew doesn't see this. The next time you need wrapping paper, look around your house and get creative.
I love to be in the kitchen. I love to cook. Yeah. One of the gift ideas I want to do this year is homemade hot sauce. Oh, it's such my a good idea. My family and a bunch of friends love hot sauces. Yeah. So I want to do my own hot sauce and then use that as yeah. a gift. And it's a little piece of you that you yeah. can give to your friends and family. I love that idea. Yeah, and if you know how to do it, you're passionate about that, it's such a great way to you know, give small, thoughtful gifts to your friends and family, but also give yourself some time to max and relax and chill out during this crazy season. They can really be a fun project for you yeah. that creates gifts for, yeah. for everybody you need to give yeah. gifts to. It doesn't have to be elaborate, you know, Apple products for yeah. everybody, but we do love <laughs> yeah. some tech Wait, though. Wait, no, we can't do. <laughs> Don't put that out into the universe. We love tech gifts. Anybody who feels like they need to give a tech gift, I'm here to receive it. When it comes to gifting tech, I think it's, Find an area in somebody's life you're giving the gift to that they wouldn't think they need anything. But yeah. once they have it in their life, they're like, this is awesome. Small kitchen upgrades, like anything with a Bluetooth speaker, anything for music, people will love. Yeah. You know? Here's some great tech gifts you can give this season. For iOS users, AirTags. These little things can help you find and track so many items. And for Apple tech, they are really affordable. An Echo Show is a fun upgrade from a regular smart speaker. With the added display, you can access so much information at a glance. And who knows, you may even see a familiar face. When it comes to food fast, nothing beats an air fryer. These are great for both culinary pros and kitchen novice. For multiple devices, a charging base station is perfect. These come in a variety of styles for charging all those devices. For music lovers, go old school with some vinyl. A record player with Bluetooth connectivity combines the vintage with the new. These are great tech gifts that are perfect for anyone. So you can do a lot of planning for gifts, you know, like this is what this person wants, this is what this mm -hmm. person needs. I love to just go shopping, browse around, and like be inspired, like yeah. have fine stuff that reminds me of somebody, and yeah. so like that's what I'm gonna get them. Yeah. One thing I like to do too is, usually they have like packaged gifts um, at the store, yeah. you see. You can actually find those at the store and then make your own version of it. Yeah, absolutely. So sometimes they'll have like a hot cocoa set in a mug and you're like, that mug's kind of like not really that cute. <laughs> so like make your own, yeah. like go find a cute mug that you know somebody yep. will like and put the cocoa in the spoon yep. and the marshmallows in it and find those prepackaged gifts yeah. ideas out there in the stores and then just make your own version yeah, of it with, absolutely. you know, stuff you like. That's kind of my favorite DIY lane to live in is finding inspiration out there in the world, in the store, wherever it may be, and seeing it and wanting to amend it and find easy ways to amend it. There you go. <laughs> Looking for an easy DIY gift for your friends with a sweet tooth? Or just treat yourself. Here's how to make festive, delicious stirring spoons. First, you're gonna wanna line a baking sheet with parchment paper and set it aside. I love to gift these stirring spoons to my coffee-loving friends for the holidays because it makes it easy for them to have a quick, sweet treat in their coffee. Using white chocolate on my spoons will turn a normal coffee into a delicious white chocolate mocha. And melting the caramel bits for my spoons will make a really, really good salted caramel latte. And milk chocolate will make the perfect homemade mocha, or you can put it in milk for a hot chocolate. And this is melting chocolate, so I'm just gonna pop it in the microwave at 30 second intervals until it's melted. To melt the caramel, I'm gonna put two tablespoons of water in it and put it in the microwave for two minutes. Now that my caramel and my chocolates are melted, it's time to dip my spoons. Speaking of spoons, I like to use a mix of antique spoons that I thrift because they're super cheap and super cool when you put them all together. How cute are those? So much fun. So when you dip your spoons, you wanna make sure that they're completely covered so you have as much sweetness as possible covering the spoon. Once you've dipped, you can just lay it down onto your parchment and prop it up on the side of your tray. Oh man, now that I'm seeing this, I don't know if I can give these away as gifts. Now that the chocolate's setting a little bit, I can start to decorate, which is the really fun part. I'm gonna use sea salt flakes for my caramel spoons for a salted caramel flavor. For milk chocolate, I like to do a little bit of toffee and then some with some sprinkle pearls. For my white chocolate spoons, I'm gonna take the opportunity and do some fun festive sprinkles. Why not? Once you've made them all pretty, all you have to do is set them aside and let them harden, and then you can wrap them. Looks like they're fully hard. Oh, this one's so festive. Festivus for the rest of us. And to wrap them, I put them in tiny little cellophane bags, just so they last longer and so it's sanitary. To close my bag, I'm gonna tie a festive little bow on it. It's gonna look so pretty and it'll be airtight. I feel like adding a bow on anything is just like instant happiness. I made a cute little tag for these. How cute is that? It's so fun and so easy and it's 
delicious. You know, I was gonna gift this uh, or put it in my coffee, but I think I'll just eat it right now. One of my go-to gifts for the holiday season is homemade soap. I make it in bulk and I always have it on hand whenever I need a gift. These are great for the holidays, but I love that you can customize them for any gift in any season. Here's how to make easy homemade scented soap. What you wanna do to make homemade soap making easy on yourself is get melt and pour soap online or at your local craft store. I'm using one pound of goat's milk soap and I'm just gonna chop it into cubes. You put your cubes into a microwave safe container. Then you're gonna microwave the soap at 30 second intervals until it's melted. I'm using goat's milk soap, but if you wanted a vegan alternative, you could use shea butter or there's just glycerin soap. You've got a lot of options. Now's the time that we can add any scents that we wanna add. I'm using a little bit of vanilla, a little bit of cinnamon, and a little bit of peppermint. It's so important to be accurate with your essential oil measurements in your soap because some essential oils can be skin irritants, so you wanna be really careful. And the general rule is about two to three teaspoons of essential oils per pound of soap. Peppermint specifically is one that can be a skin irritant, so it's good to go light on the peppermint if you want that scent in your soap. I pulse some plain oatmeal in my food processor and I'm gonna add it to my soap because it's so good for your skin. Now we're gonna pour our soap into our mold and you can use any silicone mold you want to shape your soap. I'm using a rectangular one to keep it simple, but you can use whatever you want. Once your soap gets totally firm, you can just easily pop it out of the molds and that just took about 20 minutes, so super easy. Now it's time to wrap. I'm really leaning into like the rustic holiday vibe here, so I'm gonna do some parchment paper wrapped around the soap, a little bit of string for a bow, fresh rosemary, and a cinnamon stick. It's gonna be cute, I'm telling you. I love using baker's twine or string or anything like it. It's just so easy to manipulate and it looks so good. It has kind of a rustic flair. Now I can put my cinnamon piece in. Add my rosemary, even wrap it around one more time to secure it and then tie it in a bow on top. Super simple, but it looks so pretty. Boom, so festive and so easy. Just how I like it. Now these are ready to give to all my nearest and dearest. Love it. Oh. Don't mind if I do. So cute. <laughs> Up next on Problem Solved. The next time you need wrapping paper, look around your house and get creative. I wonder what could be inside. There was this era where I feel like Everybody was just giving gift cards. <laughs> yeah. And I think we need to like make the switch, you know, yeah. if you want, give the gift receipt. But still, you know, yeah. it's, it's more about giving something tangible. Yeah, for sure. That made you think of that person when yeah. you saw it at the store. For so sure. I, I think we need to make that, that change. You know, no more yeah. gift cards, yeah. people. You don't need the gift card as a crutch, even though I get it. Sometimes we're all under a little pressure. It's time sensitive, you know? We're, we're racing, we're racing the Christmas Day, uh, Christmas Day brunch or whatever we're doing. Starbucks for yes, you. it's Starbucks gift card for you. Actually, it's digital. It's <laughs> digital, yes. I just emailed yeah, it to you. Actually, I just, Enjoy. It's in your inbox, don't worry about it. I totally get it, that's fine. But yeah, there are so many other easy, creative ways to uh, make something a little more personal or more interesting. I wonder what could be inside. Wow. Here's how to make giving a gift an extra surprise. One thing I like to do is disguise my gifts. Yep, I'm sneaky. That's not cereal. For a real fake out, leave the top sealed and put the gift in through the bottom. After unwrapping, this is gonna be an even bigger surprise. To really conceal the mystery, stuff the box with tissue paper to keep the gift from rattling around. What a fun way to use boxes you already have. Plus, this makes wrapping gifts that aren't in a box so much easier. You can also theme the disguise box based on the gift you're giving. A box like this would be great to give a movie gift card. The best part about gift giving is the surprise, and this takes it up a level. I hope my nephew doesn't see this. One of my sisters yeah. loves Scooby-Doo. So I found Scooby-Doo fruit snacks and put her gift inside of there. That's actually so, so she cute. opens it up and it's it's like, oh, you, uh, you know I like Scooby-Doo, so thank you for giving me fruit snacks for Christmas. But of like her gift is this. actually inside of the box. Oh, of course you did, so, that's genius. That's you know, really genius. When it comes to holidays, I like playing little kind of pranks, yeah. little fun, um, find creative ways to wrap your gifts. And I yeah. love even sustainable ways to wrap a gift. You know, you don't have to just get wrapping paper so true. and wrap a gift. Yeah. You can find a bunch of different ways yeah. to creatively conceal what yeah. you're gifting. <laughs> I love that though. I mean, if somebody gifted me a tote or a basket or a box with my actual gift, 
I would use it, 100%, you know? Exactly. Yes, thank you, I needed this. It's and you think awesome. about that person every time you use that item. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like a memory. Yeah. That, you know, instead of trash. <laughs> yeah, for sure. After a lot of wrapping, you may just be left with scraps. Here's some ideas for wrapping when you don't have paper. An easy go-to is just to reach for aluminum foil, wax paper, or parchment. It is a little funky and unconventional, but it'll get the job done and you'll have a unique gift. There we go, all wrapped up and you didn't have to scramble at the last minute for wrapping paper. Fabrics like burlap or scarves are gonna be great for wrapping gifts too. And then the fabric can be repurposed however you like. This way you have some creative wrapping styles. And bonus, no ripped paper. So the next time you need wrapping paper, look around your house and get creative. We just shamed all the people who got, who give people gift cards. <laughs> that used to be me. I'm like, gift card for everybody. Yeah, no, 100%. And then one year, all my siblings said, uh, we really don't like gift cards or we never, we always forget to use them. So oh it's gosh. probably not a good gift. And I'm you like, know, well, I, I do feel bad for that's shaming. That's on you. <laughs> yeah, I feel bad for shaming because my sister and I have a tradition of for each other's birthdays, giving each other, um, Nordstrom gift cards because we have this joke See? that there's some there's always some weird like expensive gadget at Nordstrom like she she wanted that face mask LED thing you <laughs> yes know? yeah so she wanted that and she was like I don't want to spend my money on it like whatever so for her birthday you know I got her our usual Nordstrom gift card and I was like get the face mask dog and yeah. you know it didn't buy her the whole thing but like yes exactly yeah so I feel bad shaming supplemented a yeah just supplemented yeah it's something she really wanted so I feel bad for shaming people that gift cards aren't bad they're, they're not, not bad. bad they're not but... no they're not bad they could be great under <laughs> some great. under under right circumstances so exactly. they can be great thanks for watching problem solved if you enjoyed this video go ahead and hit that subscribe button and check out some of our other videos like these two right here <laughs>